Hello. Hey, everyone. My name is Bastian. Today, we're going to talk about sales techniques, okay? About the digital funnel for schools and agencies. And um, I run a company called Wild Audience. We're based in Spain, in Barcelona. And we believe the following thing. We believe that faster growth starts with accelerating relationships, okay? And I wanna, get, I wanna bring you guys back when I was 14, uh, around 10 years ago, and <laughs> that was in Oxford, right? So I'm, I'm from Austria, I'm from Vienna, and that was um, important for two reasons, okay? Um, the reason number one is, of course, it was my first uh, you know, study abroad experience. Uh, I studied English. And then the second reason is it was my first kiss with this <laughs> French beautiful lady here. So I always connect my first experience, my first study abroad experience with something really positive. Um, and we actually met a few years after, um, every year, so it was pretty cool. I met her at a different um, uh, study abroad experience in, in England again. So it was really, really cool. I always remember that. And I liked it so much that then uh, maybe two years later I went to Anna, uh, to Langboards in, in, in Brisbane. And I did kind of like a part-time thing. Uh, half of the day I studied English and half the day I worked in the school. And then uh, a year later uh, with uh, Walter, where is he? There you go. <laughs> at Lean and Dance, I did an internship, half year, a half day, and then half day working on social media, different th different things. And um, so in total, I worked with uh, Langports, Lean and Dance, and Actilingua, uh, which is my par parents' school in Vienna. And then after that, I thought, okay, that was cool. I really want to kind of like take it to a different type of you know uh, level. And that was kind of like learning languages online. So that was Buzu in uh, in in London. All right. So they did a lot of social media. Uh, got introduced to a lot of different things. It was really cool. And then after London, I went to the United States. Um, I started my company, Wild Audience, there uh, in San Francisco. And then a year later, uh, we onboarded one of these clients. Uh, so I teach you a language, okay? Um, so that's going to be one of the clients which I'm going to use as a case study for this presentation, okay? I'm going to show different things. I'm going to teach you guys how to build a sales process, uh, a very specific type of sales process, a sales funnel called relationship funnel, okay? Uh, last year, we helped 224 companies to acquire customers at profit and scale, okay? And we even have a little love page. I'm not sure if you guys have a love page. It's a wall of love, and just these are testimonials, love screenshots, result screenshots, and it's, it's pretty cool. People share why they become clients and customers, and then we show it to other clients, just to brag a little bit, and it's, it's, it's really cool. And so today is all about how to acquire students through an automated sales process, okay? Um, so I want to start this with a little game, okay? So I would love everyone to stand up right now. That would be really cool. I want to figure out who is doing what, okay? The different things in marketing, and I want to get a feeling of who the audience is. So if you, everyone can stand up, it's good for your feet. And it's very simple, okay, it's very simple. Uh, I want to I ask you a question, it's either a yes or a no, okay? If it's a no, you guys sit down, okay? So the first question is, who has a mobile responsive website? If you don't, sit down. If you have one, stay. Great, awesome, that's really cool. If you don't know, then sit down. Yeah, if you don't know, if you don't know, always sit down, okay? There was going to be a few questions. If you don't know if you have a mobile responsive website, sit down. If you don't have one, sit down. If you have one, stay. Who has an email newsletter? You know, like a, the normal thing, sending out an email once a month. If you don't have an email newsletter where you stay in touch with your people, sit down. If you have one, stay. Who runs Facebook ads? If you don't run Facebook ads today, sit down. What about Instagram ads, YouTube ads, Google ads? If you don't, sit down. Who has behavior-based email automation installed? If you don't know what behavior-based email automation is, sit down. Who does lead segmentation? No one left? Oh, there's one. Vita is still up. <laughs> one of the strong ones. 
And then the last one, Walter. Do you acquire students a profit and scale through an automated sales funnel? <laughs> all right, that's what we talk about today. Thanks, everyone. That was the little game. So kind of like now we get a feeling of who is doing what, okay? Everything what I talked about today is what we will cover in this talk, okay? And basically what we want if we build a sales funnel, we want these two things. The most important is we want to have a student that pays, right? That's awesome. That's great, right? Many students. Many students, exactly. That's what we want. In order to get that, we need to have some sort of sales conversation, a quote, an inquiry, a phone conversation, a walk-in, right? So these are the two main things that we want to achieve if we, if we build a sales funnel, a relationship funnel, okay? Now, let's think about how do, we, how do we get a student right now, okay? Right now, status quo, so to say, okay? We need to get awareness somehow. It could be anything. We're going to talk about this in a second, like an ad, could be a banner, could be content, could be SEO, right? Could be flyers, brochures. Then we need to get them onto a website, onto a meeting, right? Uh, on a phone, into our office. Next step is we need to download, to kind of get some more information about our courses, offering prices. Maybe that's a brochure, maybe it's a price list, right? And then once they've checked this out, right, they think about it, and then they're going to get a quote, right? They're making course inquiry to fill out some re registration form, either on the website or in person in the school. After that, there's going to be some email back and forth, maybe between the school and the student, or between the agency and the school, availability, needs, all these type of different things, right? <laughs> all right, so I'm going to slow down. <laughs> the second thing, the next thing, is to send an offer, all right? So now we have some email back and forth. We know what this person wants. Let's send an offer, let's send an invoice, let's get these people to pay. Some of them will pay, some of them will not. And then we'll send the arrival information. That's the process, okay? So now we need to think about how can we automate this, right? Structure it. Because if we don't, we're gonna have some problems, okay? Let's talk about awareness. How do we get awareness right now? Right? Referral from a friend could be one. Referral from a student, referral from a teacher, referral from a university, Google search, right? If you guys do blogging, social media, recommendations from university, tourism fairs, brochures, cold emailing. Maybe you guys have a database of 10,000 people. You're going to send them a brochure, you're going to send them an email. That's, ho that's how we can generate eyeballs, people who may be interested, right? Uh, and so on, there are many different things. Now, let's think about what is the problem with this current process. If you don't, if the people, all of the people who sat down, what are some of the problems? Okay, we wanna talk about this now. What's, let's, let's think about it, okay? Let's assume you guys go around and, uh, and do presentations in schools and universities, right? So you need to hire salespeople, teachers, whatnot, right? So maybe you're in one country, maybe in different countries. Right? So hiring a lot of salespeople, doing different types of presentations is maybe expensive, it's operational, quite difficult. Right? So scaling this is quite difficult. Right? Then the question is, if people are interested, where are we losing these people? Some of them will be interested, some of them maybe respond to an email, then they stop responding. What is the main thing that stops them to move and continue towards the process? Right? We want to know, out of all the people who visit our website, who continues, where do they stop? Out of all the people who register, who actually pays, right? We want to know these steps. And then, of course, we want to know our KPIs, okay? Our key performance indicators. We want to know what is our conversion rate. Out of all the people who visit our website, who actually buys, right? Is it 1%, half a percent, 2%? That changes a lot. How much does it cost me to acquire an email address, right? A registration. Right? How much does all these things cost? Because if I know it, if I know to schedule one appointment in my office, it costs me 350 euros, and on average my customer lifetime value is 2,000 euros, I can make the math, right? I'm happy to spend 350 per appointment if I know all my numbers, okay? So getting an overview, and often this is not the case. Most business owners don't know this. Maybe they know their customer lifetime value, but that's it, right? Where are students coming from? What is the most important acquisition channel? Is it Facebook, SEO, content, influencer marketing? What is it, right? If I know that 
our best customers who rebook and come every summer, who have the highest customer lifetime value, are coming from Instagram and not from Facebook, well, then I'm going to spend my money on Instagram and not Facebook, right? Maybe it's agencies. Maybe it's something else, right? Maybe it's direct mailing. We want to know what our best channel is, okay? Now, usually it comes down to three problems, okay? As a school or as an agency, we often don't get enough leads. A lead is someone who gives you some sort of contact detail, like a phone number or usually it's an email address, right? Once we have that email address, this person is, hey, I'm a lead, right? So often people, uh, schools or agencies don't have enough leads. The second problem is once we have a lead, we don't get enough sales conversations booked. Sales calls, appointments, walk-ins, all these type of different things, right? And then lastly, maybe we get a lot of conversations, but maybe only 10% of these people are actually close. Our conversion rate is quite low, okay? To close someone means to get them to pay, okay? Now, so these are the three problems. Now, how can we fix them? How can we get automated leads? How can we get automated appointments, okay? So for example, that's what we do. Our clients, when they set up this relationship funnel, we get 150, that's for example, that's our, that's, these are our numbers. 150, around 150 leads every single day. I know this number, right? I know that I spend four or five bucks per lead, right? And then, this is the sales calendar. So these are appointments, sales conversations on the phone, in real life, in the office. We wanna schedule appointments. And in the best case scenario, I'm gonna look at my calendar and it's booked. And I didn't do anything. I just, the person shows up on the call or then the appointment and I talk to the person, right? And then of course we want inquiries. Okay, this is the month of, what is this? I can't read it. April, I think, right? I know my deal values. I'm, I know the, 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 the value of each deal, my pipeline of the month, pipeline of the month, right? The potential deals I can close, the potential students I can close, right? We want to have an overview of our process. Now, how do we do it? We, at Wild Audience, we have created a certain process, and we call it relationship funnel, okay? Like sales funnel, but we understand that business is relationships between people, right? And it's in the offline world, so and it's in the online world as well, and that's why we acquire students a profit and scale by first establishing a relationship, establishing trust and authority, installing all necessary buying beliefs, and then we get them to pay, okay? So how do we do it? Let's think about it. Selling, what is selling, okay? Selling online is just like making friends or dating. It's the same thing, right? So, I don't know. You have, what's your favorite hobby? Your favorite hobby? Swimming. Swimming. What's your name? Luis. Luis, Luis loves swimming, all right? I don't know Luis, all right? So we're gonna meet here and I, I'm asking, you know, Hey, Luis, what's up? My name is Bastian, right? Nice to meet you too, right? You're interested in swimming? Oh, me too. You know what? My dad always took me to swimming once a week, and it was great. Now I also love it. What was your last, what's your favorite sea to swim in? Right? So you tell me about the sea where you love to swim. Now we're going to, you know, we're going to talk, right? I'm asking a few questions. I, I collect data about this person. Once I have the data, okay, swimming, Luis, all right, cool. I'm going to shift my conversation towards swimming because that's a mutual interest, Right? If, I wouldn't be, if I wasn't interested in swimming, maybe I would ask more questions until we find something what we're both interested in. Right? Now, since I talk about swimming, Louis is interested. Right? He's interested. He starts to engage with me. He's, he asks me a few questions too. Right? In the end, we go swimming together. We become swimming buddies. Right? That's what offline, the offline world is all about. In the online world, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Okay, the only difference is that the end goal is not a swimming body, but ROI and profits, return on investment and profits, right? We believe, I'm not sure if you guys can read that, this whole process is called respect-based marketing. So not just marketing, respect-based marketing, okay? And that's basically, this says, no one buys without belief, okay? 
So we all have a belief system, okay? You have a belief system, you have a belief system, you have a belief system, I have a belief system. That's how we walk through life and decide between right and wrong, right? So if you want to get someone to purchase a course, become a customer, become a student, we need to figure out what are all the necessary buying beliefs someone needs to believe before they can accept the desire or need of our product. So we take a piece of pe paper, a pen, we write down all these beliefs. Someone needs to believe A, B, C. We're going to do an example in a second. Don't worry, guys. Okay? And then once they believe all these things, they have no choice than actually pulling out their credit card and buy your course. Okay? So this process, I'm going to walk you through the whole process. That was the introduction, the foundation. Okay? This is the process we walk our clients through from A to Z. Our clients charge us between 10 and 20K, and that's exactly what we're going to do now. Okay? So take a piece of paper, write down the process. It's the exact same process. Okay? Now, what is the foundation? Before we can build something like that, before we can build a relationship funnel, we need to get the foundation right, and that is we need to know who we sell to, who is our customer avatar. And often, these are different types of people. Maybe it is someone who wants to learn Spanish because then he gets a better job offer, makes more money, right? He needs a certificate. This is a very different person than a student from, who studies German and needs to pass the exams, right? Or someone who is just interested in traveling, more experiences. So these are three different avatars. And probably most of you guys have the different offerings for all of these people, right? So we need to be aware of these different av avatars. Right? And if we create an automated sales funnel, we need to customize this funnel for the specific avatar. Okay, so step number one, who is your ideal customer? Okay, avatar means just profile, right? So we write them down. Usually it's between three and four, five, depends, right? We write them down and then we pick one, okay? The most promising one, the one which has the lowest amount of risk, because building out a relationship funnel, you guys are going to see in a bit, is work. It takes work, right? So we want to avoid building something, and it then doesn't work out. And one thing to avoid that is to figuring out who is our most promising, low-risk customer avatar. Then, what is the best offer for this avatar? If it's, so this is an example here. Um, is it, is it someone who is interested in jobs, or is it someone who is interested in, stu in studies? Is it someone interested who is more interested in having fun, right? The final offer for this person, right? The packages, right? Maybe you have different languages. And then once we have that, we need to make sure that we position the offer the right way to the avatar. Okay, example. Avatar university student. Okay? Offer. University preparation course. Right? So to prep them for university, get, a, get, um, get accepted at your favorite university in London. Right? So you get to study English. Right? Positioning. Get accepted for your dream university. Right? There are different types of positioning you can choose. Many different. Right? This needs to be aligned. If there is misalignment, you can build the most amazing, most complex, craziest funnel on, funnel on this planet. It won't work. Okay? So you need to have an understanding of your avatar. And that's important. And that's what you guys know. You have, you've been doing this for many, many years. You know your audience. Right? Very important. Now, so now we know the offer, the avatar, the positioning. Next step. Belief system. I talked about it. Remember, no one buys without belief. Right? If I now try to sell an orange to my dad, right? And my dad, with six years old, had a really bad experience eating an orange, right? Maybe it was old, it was bad, so he tried it, and then he was like, ooh, I didn't, he didn't like it, right? And still, he doesn't like it, right? Now, if I'm an, a guy who sells oranges, I can try my best sales techniques. It's going to be really, really difficult because he has this false beliefs about oranges that they are bad based on a past experience. So if I want to be a great salesperson now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break his false belief, right? I need to figure out, okay, why does he believe that? And then break it. Okay, and then I need to reinstall the new belief. 
that oranges are actually yummy and healthy and great. Lots of Instagram influencers eat it and so on, right? And then once I've installed these beliefs, then it will be easy to sell, right? And that's the same thing. The question is the following here, most important question, okay? What are all the necessary buying beliefs your ideal client needs to believe before he or she can accept the desire or need of your product, okay? Once you know that, again, you put them down on a paper, you write them down, okay? Example. Let's take this avatar, okay? 22 years old university student that wants to improve Spanish to pass exams, explore, learn, and have fun. That's our avatar, right? There, there's a point called belief endpoint. That is the point where someone is ready to pull out the credit card and pay you money, all right? That's the, the end belief they need to have. If I book your course, I will pass my Spanish exam. That's the belief you want them to believe, okay? Okay, where are they right now? What is the status quo, right? Maybe they don't know your brand yet, right? The, the status quo is, I already started to learn Spanish and I really want to improve. They have never heard about your school, right? So, that's where you want to catch them, right? Maybe with an ad, maybe with something else. And then, you need to put them into your sales funnel, into your relationship funnel and install these belief, beliefs, step by step in this order. Okay, step number one. I believe I will achieve my language level faster if I visit a class and have a te teacher than by trying it myself, right? So that's important, because otherwise they can just also study it at home, right? Next thing, and I just made this up. I'm not a, like, industry professional here. You guys probably know this way better. <laughs> I just did this before, okay? Um, next one is, I believe that going to a country like Spain will help me to speak faster than by staying at home, right? If they don't believe that, then why would they buy a course in Spain? They will just do it at home with a teacher in, in, in England, right? So next one is, um, I believe that I want to experience new things, learn about Spanish culture and have fun. I believe that learning Spanish is actually fun because I will make, I will make new friends and visit a new country. I believe, I believe that if I book your course, I will progress way faster than if I do it myself. So do you see? So here this was more general, more about I want to visit a country, I want to learn, I want to have fun. If someone doesn't want to have fun, probably the fun package is not the right package for him, right? So, and here we start more talking about the, the, the product, the course, right? It says every sentence starts with I believe, right? Important, All right? So they go through your funnel and then the funnel has content, emails, ads, videos, blog posts, right? And all this content installs these beliefs through stories and different types of mediums. Right? We're going to talk about this in a second. Right? In the end, they believe, I believe that if I book your course, I'll pass my Spanish exam. Right? That was an example for the belief system. Now you take this list and you map it onto your relationship funnel. Remember, relationship funnel is just like a sales funnel. Right? This is our thing. Relationship funnel, right? Now you got to figure out, okay, let's say there are 12 beliefs I need to install. Where do I install belief number one? Where two? Where three? Is, should belief number three be installed in email one or two? What is the right order, right? This is very important. If someone goes through your online funnel and you miss a belief, they won't be able to believe the next one, right? So there's lots of brain power behind thinking this through, okay? Now, so this was the foundation we talked about customer avatars, positioning, offer, belief system, belief, mapping. Let's build. So the whole graphic looks like this. It's quite big and there's lots of different things and you're probably like, I don't understand any, any of this. And during this presentation, we're just gonna focus on this top part. I'm gonna zoom in in a second. This part and this part, okay? So don't worry, it's the simplest version of the funnel, okay? This works best, and this is really important, because remember, we don't want to waste any time building this. We want to reduce our risk. How do we reduce our risk? By having product market fit. Product market fit. It means I have something to sell that people actually pay me money for, and that solves their problem, right? If I have something like that, that's great, right? And all of you have, right? All of you have. 
And then we want to have a client success case study. I want to have at least one student that came to my school, that bought my product, right, and loved it so much that they're willing to do a testimonial and even you uh, wrote a case study about this person. Maybe how James came to my school, uh, had A1, is that level? Yeah, A1. Or B, and then achieved B1 in three months. Right? Great. Here's how he did it. Everyone who has the same type of journey will feel like, whoa, if James can do it, I can do it too. But the reason why we want this here for business is it reduces our risk. Right? Second thing, customer lifetime value. We work with clients who only sell tickets, items, products, courses, for at least two of average 2K. Right? That's the type of clients we work with because, again, it gives us room to, to sell. If someone sells something for seven euros, it will be difficult to acquire a new customer, show them ads, and so on. Right? So if it's 2K, it's way easier. Right? So you've got to think about what is my customer lifetime value on average? How much should they pay on average if they book a course at your school? And then how many people re come back a year later? Right? What is the average customer lifetime value? All purchases together on average. Ideally, it's above 2K. Okay? Then we want to have a six-figure annual run rate. This basically means we make at least 100K a year. Right? This also shows me, okay, people pay money. Right? And that means our offer is risk has, has, has a low amount of risk, okay? And so that's kind of like how we start. Now, ev now the whole funnel I'm gonna show you guys is based on this guy. I will teach you a language. What do they do? So they're one of our clients. Um, they have a lot of languages, Italian, German, French, Spanish, Chinese, and whatnot. Um, and basically do everything online. Everything is online, they don't have a school. They have online courses teaching all these different languages. Okay, the reason I took, I take this example because it's about languages. You guys sell languages too, so I thought it makes sense. Okay, and it's also quite cool to show the process and their results for you guys. Okay, so they do, um, they have half a million website visitors a month, just some stats. They're also doing really well in terms of revenue, and they build a relationship funnel with us. And when you build a relationship funnel, we gotta think about the different stages. Okay. Someone comes in here, a funnel. This is a funnel, right? In German, it's Trichter. I'm not sure what it is in Spanish. It's like, this is a funnel, okay? People come in here and paying customers come out here. People who are not our customers come in here, paying customers here, okay? Simple. Now, at the beginning is the awareness stage, the first layer, okay? The awareness stage is all about how can I make potential students aware that I exist? Okay. Once they are aware of us, we want to build a relationship, right? It's the relationship stage. We want to position us as an authority, create trust, establish a relationship, install all necessary buying beliefs. That's stage number two, the most important one. Because if I do things correctly in this stage, selling will be easier. And then we have the upsell stage, which is basically repeat customers. Okay. We're going to focus now on the first three. As you can see here, this is the relationship funnel. This is the awareness stage, relationship stage, sales stage. Okay, just for you guys to understand the big picture. Now, step number one, we need to get some traffic. Okay, so how do we get traffic? Walter, what type of traffic do you do? Like, are you doing SEO, content? What are the type of things you guys do? Yeah, social, social media, great. Content, great. Papa, what do you guys do also? You guys try it. Google, no? Google Ads? It's for existing, for fresh people, people who don't know each other, know us, right? AdWords, right? What else? We can, do, we can contact schools, right? We can build relationships with teachers. These are all, this is traffic, like car traffic, right? That's traffic. They all go to your website. There are many different things we can do. Exam examples. The, one of our client, the client, I will teach you a language, talk, dot com. One thing they do is search, Google search. What does it say? Is German hard to learn? Someone types this in. 
his article number one, right? So now this potential customer who is interested in learning German reads his article, right? Or option number two, running a Facebook ad, Instagram ad that's paid. Organic is for free. You produce content, if you're smart, you rank well on SEO, on Google, and your article's on top, right? We're not gonna talk about this. Let's assume you rank on top, people find your stuff, right? It's for free. You, of course, need to pay the writers and all these things, but you don't need to pay Google here. Paid is paid, meaning if you don't pay, you don't have any traffic. You go to Facebook, you go to Mark Zuckerberg, you put 100 bucks on the table, you'll get leads. If you stop paying the 100 bucks, you're not gonna make any leads, right? That's the difference. I teach you a language, you have different ads. Here for Spanish, here him teaching something, something else, right? These are ads, right? Now, where do we drive the traffic towards to, right? People arrive on our website, what do we offer them, right? That's called a lead magnet, right? Anyone have ever heard of a lead magnet? Lead magnet, no, no one? Walter, up there, crazy, cool, crazy. Awesome. Three, amazing. What is a lead magnet? Walter, if you could explain real quick what a lead magnet is. It's, it's something you give away. It's uh, usually a freebie, but you, you want to have something in return. Usually? At, le at least an email address is what you have. Yeah? Online, an, online, an online test, for instance. Yeah. yeah. I'll give some examples in a second. Example, for example, so what does our client does? He has a, a blog post. The bo is German hard to learn? Remember, a honest analyzer for beginners. On the right, you will see German tips by email. Get my best, I my eyes are really bad. Um, but so that's, that's the, the lead magnet here, okay? Or another one is free email course. People speak too fast, free, e free email course that teaches you advanced listening skills to understand native speakers at any speed, right? Remember, someone reads, is German hard to, to, to learn? And then they offer free course. People speak too fast. Here's how you figure it out. Right? That's a lead magnet. Here's some more ideas. Chinese tips by email. Get my best fluency boosting, grammar boosting Chinese tips by email. People speak too fast. That's this. Speak Cantonese like a local in 30 minutes a day. Language online test. 100 most common uh, vocabularies to survive, free survival guide, two pages, what is your level? Test your Spanish, right? These are all examples. There are many, many more, okay? I'm gonna give you guys some more examples in a second. If we, so this was for, for free. Remember, organic means free, right? Blog post, we have a blog. We offer this course here for free, the lead magnet. Now, if we do paid, we run the ad here on Facebook, on Instagram, let's say. Here he tells a story, some crazy picture, and then basically he gives away a free Spanish verb, what does it say? Cheat sheet, right? 33 essential Spanish verbs. People can sign up for this, right? This is for beginners. They sign up for these verbs, right? most important ones, then you need to answer some questions and then get this PDF with these 33 essential uh, verbs, okay? 30 Italian slang words and phrases to help you fit in with the natives. Why learn Italian? Eight powerful reasons why learning Italian will change your life. How to write Chinese, there you go. <laughs> How to write Chinese, a beginner's guide. guide. 121 common Chinese phrases to survive your first conversation with a native speaker. 10 tips to learn French fast, even if you're a language learning newbie. How to master Spanish verb conjunction, five easy steps. There are many, many ideas. I just put down a few, right? So someone who is like me, I mean, I'm beginner slash intermediate Spanish speaker. I wanna go next to the next step, right? So maybe I find something in here, right? If I told a beginner, if I want to learn Spanish, I just moved to Barcelona. Okay, what are the, like there's so many vocabularies. What are the most important ones, the 100 most important ones? Yeah, I will download this and then I'm gonna study them, right? Now, in order to get that, like Walter said, I need to give an email address, okay? And that's the second step here, segmentation. Segmentation, what is that? 
Remember when I asked Luis what he is interested in? I asked a question. In return, I got data, output, right? Swimming, right? So we need to do the same. What is your current level? Are you beginner, intermediate, advanced? What is your age group? Teenager, adult? Do you need to? I need to go closer. <laughs> do you need? Do you need for a job, for studies, or just for fun? Remember, three different avatars. We need to ask who these people are. Because if someone wants to, I don't know, um, it, it, it's, his company moved this person to Italy, so now they're forced to study Italian. This person will be very different than a 16-year-old summer camp teenager, right? We've got to figure out who these are so that we can speak to their heart and install the right beliefs. How soon do you want to get started? Next, this summer, next summer, tomorrow? Very important question. Someone who wants to get started this week, important. Someone who wants to get started in two years, not that important, right? Is it for you or someone else? Maybe the parents, right, want to buy the, the thing, right? How much time do you want to study? Do you have two weeks in summer or is it actually a six-month thing? Someone who wants to stay six months, the customer lifetime, customer lifetime value of this person is going to be way higher. Very important lead. We want to know these people. Ask the question. This is basically called segmentation. Collecting data, using data to then personalize the conversation, okay? Just like in real life, just like dating, making friends, same thing. The segmentation will come on the second phase after you get like the email information or whatever. You it will come to, very good question. So this gentleman asked, when does segmentation come in place, right? Remember when we give away this PDF, right? This free course or whatever? They want this, the 33 essential Spanish verbs in order to get it. We say, hey, you can, I'll send it to your email. Before I send it to you, please let me know. Are you beginner, intermediate, or advanced? Right? Question number one. Question number two. Do you want to do, you know, then you have a three, four different questions. You can customize this question based on the previous input. Right? You can do, use different tools like that. It's very technical. You can talk about it later if you want. I can give you different tools. Very simple to set up. Okay? This is part of it. So giving the email address and asking for the questions is one step. First, you ask questions, then you ask for the email address. They submit the email address, they get the PDF, they get the free course. What you have is a lead. Someone, okay, I'm gonna show, someone who looks like this. So this is me in my own system. I have a nice little picture, my social profile pictures, our social media links. My answers are here. All my website visitors, our website visits, Attract here. This is a tool we use Active Campaign. There are many different. Walter uses something else. I'm, I'm sure everyone uses different tools. There is maybe you guys know Mailchimp. This is not good enough for these type of things. There's Trip. There's Converge, ConvertKit. Many different tools, right? So let's show the segmentation in action. Here we go. So I read this blog post. Uh, let's do it. No. Here we go. So I'm interested in the blog post. I'm interested in the course. Get my German tips. Yes, okay, what is your current level? Beginner. Now I'm gonna put in the question, my information. That's it, right? So I'm gonna put in my information. I already answered the question first, right? That's from our client again, an example. I sign up, I arrive on a thank you page, double opt-in. Thanks, hey, this is me. I'm Ollie, and here's the, the lead magnet, delivery. Dear German speaker, that's it. Now we have a lead, right? We have the information. We know what this person is interested in. We want to know the goal. Is it to, to achieve B2? Is it to have fun? Or is it to pass your exam? We know the goal. We know the current status. I'm beginner. I'm intermediate. Maybe I know a few other things. And now I know what this person is interested in. Right? I'm going to talk to this person's needs and heart. Right? I'm going to establish a relationship. Right? How do we establish a relationship? This part. So basically, why don't we just sell now? Right? We have an email address, let's call him, let's sell him, right? let's bombard him. That's how it was in the past. Right? The problem is people, the market gets segment, uh, get, uh, very saturated, people are really like, they don't like these type of techniques anymore. They want to bond with people just in, like offline. Right? We want to establish a relationship. Right? From who do you prefer to buy? Someone you actually trust, seen results, someone who actually cares about you, talks to you, or someone who says, buy my stuff. Easy answer, right? Now, how can we establish this relationship? 
right? How do we do that? In, in offline, it's, like, it's easy. We're going to talk, have a conversation. I'm going to call you, right? We're going to meet at a networking event. That's offline. How do we do the whole thing online? Automated emails. I'm not talking about manual emails. We need, that's where when I asked who does behavior-based email automation and everyone sat down, this is this part, okay? Automated behavior-based email automation. The one way to establish a relationship. How this is done, I'll talk about in a second. Ads. Once someone signs up for the PDF, how cool would it be if the same day later we'll see an ad from the school, happy students, maybe showing certificates, having fun on the beach, student testimonials, right? We can communicate with our potential customers on Facebook through ads, on Instagram through ads, on YouTube through ads. We can send them automated emails. Every second day, every third day, we can send them an email, right? A sequence of emails. Usually it's around seven emails, sometimes four. And this is initial sequence which has two goals to establish a relationship and to install all necessary buying beliefs, right? We call this the RBS, the Relationship Builder Sequence. In other words, this is just an email sequence with a lot of brain power behind it, okay? What is the difference between relationship building, marketing, which is marketing, guys, marketing is not selling, and then we have sales, which is selling, right? First marketing and then selling, right? Marketing is automated emails, ads, blog posts, YouTubes, free education, educational materials, and so on. Selling is a website form, a manual email. Hey, I saw you're interested in this. Do you want to jump on a call? This is a sales email, right? What's up? Phone, meeting, office, Skype, live chat. Once it comes towards the product, hey, which offers do you have available? How much is that? Which is cheaper? These are sales-related questions. This is selling. Before that is marketing, which is building a relationship, right? And ideally, we want to build this, or not ideally, we build this relationship automatically, right? In my case, I run a company called Wild Audience. I'm the face of the company, right? So if people schedule a call, a sales call with us, <laughs> they, if you go to remember the love page and you scroll down, you will see people saying, it's funny. It feels like I know Bastian. I have a relationship with him. He's the guy next door. In reality, you have a relationship with a machine, right? And that's what you want to achieve. It's a little bit crazy, but that's what you want to achieve. And now imagine if this person then meets you in the office or jumps on a sales call, right? Or walks in or whatnot, right? How, how much easier the sales conversation is going to be, right? Now, I mentioned the automated email sequence. It looks like this. Email one, email two, email three, email four, five, six, seven. In between, we can say two, two days in between, three days, depends. We do two. And, um, and all these emails install the beliefs. We need to, remember, we have our paper with all the, inst the, the buying beliefs. Now we need to map the beliefs on the, onto this email sequence. We've got to make sure, okay, probably in email one, it's good to install belief one, two, and three. Because then in email two, we can install belief three, four, and five, and so on, right? So that's very important. In the end, here usually we don't pitch per se. We don't sell per se. We want to establish a relationship through content. And this is done. Our, our client, or all of our clients, we do that through story, storytelling, right? We, and this is probably your newsletters don't look like this. Your newsletters look maybe more professional, they have images, they look more corporate. We want to be personal. We actually want to have a face. Someone, hey, this is, could be a fictional person, could be the CEO of the company, could be the head teacher. Someone who's called Anna, or Roland, or Bastian, right? And then this email is automated, and you can let the readers know that this is automated, but it was written by a specific person, right? People build a relationship with this person. Ideally, this person is the face of the company, right? It doesn't have to be the CEO or the business owner. It can be anyone in the company. Often, other clients, they don't want to have any real person that create a fictional profile. Cool, too, right? And here's the story. And usually, we want to com combine these stories with videos, okay? So what type of content, what type of stories can we write? We can write about 
maybe the reason why you studied, uh, why you created a language school is because you had some crazy project with, I don't know, 22, and you wanted to go to Italy, and you wanted to study Italy and, and accomplish this goal to, to, to speak Italian language in three months. So this is a story worth telling, right? Or maybe you have one of your students who is this crazy study to guy or girl, right? Who spends two months at your school and then tell a story. So this, is, this is Emily. Emily joined our school there. At the beginning, her level was so-and-so. Look, here's an image of her sitting in our school, right? You tell the story, right? You show Im images. You, you show real students, activities, testimonials on the beach, Love stories, real stuff, not some corporate stuff, not some product-related things. Hey, we have offer Y, Z, and X. This costs 100 bucks, this 200 bucks, this 300 bucks. It's boring. People want to have a relationship. They want to build a relationship with people. Once you have that, then, you then sell at the right time, right? Again, remember all these different content ideas? Like 10 tips to learn French fast, right? This could be an email. Right? How to master Spanish verb, con whatever, right? This could be an email, right? So this was the email channel. There are many different channels, communication channels on how we can establish a relationship. There are many. Automated emails is one. Retarget, who knows what retargeting is? Raise your hand. Three, four, five, 10 people. 10 people, 15 maybe. Retargeting is basically showing ads. What an ad is, we all know. We know it from the newspaper, right? Nowadays, we have, seen, we have ads on Instagram, YouTube, Google, Facebook. The places, what's up very soon, right? The places where the gener we hang out, right? The potential buyers, all of us hang out on LinkedIn, right? And we can, we can produce organic content, free content, and publish it, but in many, many platforms, it's very inefficient because the, re the, the platform, let's say Facebook, doesn't show your post to many people. But it's very cheap to advertise to an existing audience. Someone who visits your website has some sort of understanding of who your brand is about. To then retarget it, meaning showing an ad, a paid ad, on Facebook or Instagram, it will be very cheap. Probably you can spend 10 bucks a day and this will be enough for most of you, right? 10 bucks a day, and you can reach 200 people seeing different ads. Imagine how people first, you know, they get a recommendation, maybe they see an ad, then they visit your website, they then download the PDF. You send them some emails every third or fourth day, every second day, they see some ads. Oli, he's showing his personal story, he's t telling his story on, on my first visit to Spain, I was in Madrid, I tried to speak Spanish, except it went so badly. Never felt so humili humiliated, right? So he tells a story, right? People who are like, yeah, I tried Spanish too. I really want to learn it, but whew, I had the same experience. It will resonate, right? I resonate with this, right? Because I want to learn Spanish, right? Here he interviews a student of the struggles of learning the language, right? People who have this, are in a similar situation, they want to learn about these stories. All of this is automated, meaning every email which we wrote here, let's say these are seven, 10 emails, you're gonna write them one time, you put them into your system, every time a new lead comes up and shows up, they will get that email. This is called asset thinking. It acts like an asset, right? Like a house, right? You have it, right? It doesn't, usually it doesn't decrease value. Hopefully, it increases value. If you sell it, you make some money, right? This is the same thing. If you spend $1,000 or euros to, to, to write to hire a copywriter to then write this sequence, this sequence is going to generate you a lot of money because all your potential customers will go through that. And remember, you spent one week writing this, and then it's written. It's done. It's automated. All the new people are taken care of. Same with the ads. The ads, you record them once, you put them into your ads manager, it's done. This is not like cold, like, it's not like if you want to find new people, it's more difficult. If you, you want to show ads to people who have never heard of your brand 
on Google, Facebook, YouTube. This is more difficult. It requires management maintenance. Retargeting is cheap and low maintenance. That's where you start. It's a low-hanging fruit. So if you don't do retargeting, the first thing you want to do is you want to record or have, you look at your blog, think about what is your, my, my best performing blog posts, my best performing YouTube video with the most views, you load them on Facebook, boom, all new people who check out your website will see some funny students having fun in, in, in Mallorca, right? Or, or showing their certificates, achieving P2, right? It's taken care of. Maybe five bucks a day, 10 bucks a day. If you have a big audience, it's more, but it's good investment, right? Now, now we build a relationship, right? We build a relationship, we install these buying beliefs, they start to trust us, they see student testimonials, right? Now it's about selling, right? It's the sales stage. Okay, so how do we get them to buy? Remember these emails here? The email has two parts, a body section, a content section, right? This is where we tell stories, have fun, deliver value, right? We deliver value by telling stories, okay? Then there's a signature where you put your face and say, hey, P.S., uh, this is me, right? Thanks for reading this email. And then P.S., and that's where you sell. This is, right, so if you think about the email, so this, you don't see it here. But if you open up an email, usually there is some text, and then, thanks for reading, dear Bastian, right? Or, thanks, Bastian, right? And then often you can put PS, sorry, PS, <laughs> and, um, and that's where you can add another story or sell something, right? So there's usually two parts of an email, if you want to sell. Value-based, content-based, and then sell-based, based, right? Selling-based, right? And often, the story can lead into the link to the sales page, right? So you tell the story about this, about Anna who came to my school and this and this and happened, she had this and this much fun, she, sh she showed these different images, and then guess what, if you want to achieve the same thing as Anna, check this page out, right? And then you click the page, you come to the overview of all the courses, maybe a video on top which says, hey, welcome to our product overview, of course overview, welcome to our school. Again, a person of welcoming you, and then below, you have the courses, right? So this is, this is, I took this from this school here, I saw, so I think they're here. Are they here? Yeah. Cool, over there, perfect. Very well done, I like it a lot. Um, so you go to the overview of their courses and then you click on one of the courses and then on the right, it says get quote, call us, live chat us, what else? Uh, order brochure, download the brochure, schedule a call, schedule an appointment, visit our office, fill out a registration. Of course, you don't put all of them there. These are all the options. These are all called sales mechanisms. Right? which allow us to have a real sales conversation. The sales conversation can happen in live chat, can happen on the phone, can happen in the office with an appointment, depending on your unique situation. I just put here all of the ones I can think of. Okay? And then in the sales stage, remember, all of them now have a relationship and trust and buying beliefs. We want to sell them. We get them to the product overview. Often what is used during selling is something that is called scarcity and urgency. Okay? What is that? For example, um, Actilingua, every fe February, they do a special offer, right? How much percent do you guys give there? 15%, 20%, 10%, something like this. 50 euro. Okay, so 50 euro less, right? 100 euro less, right? 10% less, whatever it is. Right? Only valid in February from until February 28. There's a deadline. Right? So if it, the people who are already thinking about it, should I go, should I not? Maybe I'm comparing the two different schools, two different agencies. Like, and then they see, ah, this person, I already have all this relationship with this school. But then they offer 50 bucks discount or 10% discount or something like that. That gives them a reason to purchase. That's one type of urgency. Right? Scarcity is if you say, hey guys, our school only has 10 seats available, 50 seats, whatever, right? We almost booked out, right? There are three more slots for students this month. If you want to get one, purchase now. So these are just examples, right? So this is how we can get people who are already thinking about it to actually then act, right? If you think about Black Friday, where all these people go crazy shopping, 
right? That's some crazy urgency because people give it away for one day for 50% off, right? That's what this is all about, right? And again, we're gonna send them from the emails to the sales page here, but also we're gonna show some retargeting ads. That's the lowest hanging fruit. Everyone who visited your sales page, product overview page, contact us now page, get an inquiry, get a quote page, all these different pages, which are about the product itself, about almost buying, about registering. You, it's called pixeling, um, it doesn't matter. Um, you pixel them and, and basically show them an ad. Hey, I saw you visit my sales page, amazing. I saw you interested in product X in this course. Here is a student testimonial testimonial of someone who did exactly that, and here's what he thinks. He loved it, rating five out of five, right? Five, re five reasons why you should come to Montpellier. Five reasons why you should join Sevilla today, this summer, right? So these are all sales-related ads um, in retargeting, another channel, okay? And then one thing I wanna give, share with you guys is the majority of ROI, return on ad spend, is long-term, meaning if you build some sort of funnel, relationship funnel, sales funnel, and you expect, maybe you drive 1,000 people to your website through Instagram ads, don't accept, expect the majority of leads to convert into customers in two weeks. The majority of people, they need 30 days, 60 days, half a year, a year, two years before they make a, before they make a purchase. And for that, we gotta stay in touch with them, right? So I ask one question, at the beginning, who does a newsletter? This is basically that. Once a month, so all of our clients send one email a week, right? So after this initial sequence, which I showed you guys, of seven emails, after this is done, it shouldn't stop here, right? This is this initial funnel, this initial sequence of seven emails where we install the buying beliefs and all these things, some crazy brain power behind it. But don't stop here. If you stop here and then people never hear from you, hear from you again, only if you have some crazy promotion going on once a, once a year, this won't work. We gotta stay in touch with them, maybe at the beginning once a month, depending on how big your team is and your resources to produce content. How do we stay in touch with them? By sending them an email, right? Once a week, for example, you can, have, you can make it a day. At my company, it's called Email Monday. Every Monday, we send an email. And people know it's Email Monday. Right, so they expect the email on Monday, right? And basically what we send them here is videos, maybe we produce a video on YouTube, and then we write a story, and then we link from the email to the, to the, to the video, right? And send it, we send it to them, right? Maybe we write an article, maybe it's a student testimonial. It can be anything. The only the most important thing is that the piece of content, and keep that in mind, is the most important thing is keeps installing buying beliefs. Okay, this is what funnels are all about. Installing beliefs, breaking false beliefs, reinstalling new ones. Okay, this is what this is about. Now, KPIs, key performance indicators. What is that? We wanna, we wanna get an overview of how our funnel, of how our sales process actually works, performs, converts, right? If I put $1 in into my funnel, Say hundred dollars. I put spend one hundred dollars on Facebook ads. How much is coming out? Is it fifty, meaning I make a loss? Is it five hundred? Is it ten thousand? Twenty thousand? Right? What is my conversion rate of my funnel? Right? Is, what is my return on ad spend? The last one, ROAS, return on ad spend, really important. For example, I run the ads for my sister. We have a ROAS of four. Meaning, if I put $100 into Facebook ads, we make $400 back, right? So we wanna know what the ROAS is, very important. What's my customer CPA? How much does it cost me to acquire a new customer, right? Let's say, if my customer lifetime value, which is something you guys need to know as well, the average money someone puts on the table for you, with you guys, how much is that? And then how much does it cost me to acquire an email address? Really important. I know it for my company. It's eight bucks, eight dollars, right? Our customer lifetime value is, for example, 13K. I know it by heart. What is a sales conversion? How much does it cost me to acquire a sales conversion? I know it. It's $372. I need to know this number, okay? And then I need to know how much it costs me to acquire a customer. 
30% of my deal value. If I know these numbers, I can then scale things up because I can make the math. If I know I spent 10 bucks per email address, 10% of these people schedule a call, and every third of that books, I have a math. I, I know the math, right? And now I'm happy to go to Facebook, Instagram, and spend 15, 20, 25K a month because I know my math. I can trust into the process. And that's what we do. And that's what you need to do as well, okay? If you build a relationship funnel, right? End results is this. Automated leads, automated appointments, and sales conversations. You jump on a call, and then you know your numbers. Every third is going to convert, okay? And then the end result is half of, usually you guys need to know what, my, what your sales conversion rate is. Maybe you know, maybe you don't. The people we work with, usually it's half a percent before they start working with us, maybe a 1%. This is what our people get. What does it say? 866-948. So almost 10% conversion rate. Industry average is half a percent, 1%. Why is that? It's not because we're some crazy funnel ninjas. It's because we understand human psychology. We understand how humans think and what they believe and then how we map that onto automation and technology, right? 18%, right? Done with relationship funnels, all right? That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. That was the relationship funnels. If you have any questions, my email address is b at wildaudience.com. Thank you very much.